direct. Nothing has changed, guys. We still love you. We still love Yeshua. We still love... But the word of God in regards to these days is very direct and very strong. So don't be mistaken that we are the authors of the Bible. Are you? We are not the yeah, authors. Yeah. The second Albert three. Oh. Guys, <laughs> if you really would quote God's word, we would be alone. We would be alone. When we would tell you God will finish the nations, he will. He will get rid of the nations, he will. Oh, the heart, the heart is very rough, you know, these days. Ask my wife, ask my children, ask my friends. I'm getting more sensitive, actually. I cry more than before. Guys, it has nothing to do with Bart or Albert or anything. But we are watchmen, God-appointed watchmen, to proclaim those words. And they're not so nice, you know. And yes, when you are called, we don't believe that, to pray for the nations, yes, bingo. Bingo! Because that is not what the Bible says. God says, I will deal with the nations. And don't hide because be, be, be behind God's grace. Oh, God is nice and graceful. Guys, God is so graceful that he gave the nations 2,000 years. That's Abendland Europa. 2,000 years for us, Europa, to bless the Jews, to embrace the Jews, to stand in the gap for the Jews, to prepare the way for the Jews, to build up the highway for the Jews, to be watchmen on the walls for Jews, and look at our history, guys. We have been killing Jews for 2,000 years. And in 1947, 1948, God said, must speak. Oops, genug ist genug. And now the people are, oh my goodness, yes, let's pray for the nations. I told you many times and I will rub it in every day when I'm here. There's no single scripture in the word of God that we are supposed to pray for the nations. On the contrary, let me read one. Just to help you a little bit, I need to help you sometimes. I think it's Jeremiah 11, 11, if I'm not mistaken. Jeremiah 11, 11. Do not pray for this people, that is Baal, nor offer any plea or petition of them. This is the tendency we're in the word of God. God called Israel. I think it's also in Psalm 59. Psalm 59, just to help you a little bit. That we are not harsh. We still are sensitive, compassionate. Five. Five. Maybe it's good for you to read this. Because there's so much confusion. It's so Christian, not correct to do what we do. So you need to wake up. Oh Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel, rouse yourself to punish all the nations. This is a prayer, guys. This is a psalm. This is a proclamation. That's what we do. 59.5. Show no mercy to the wicked traitors. Ach, Father, be merciful. Guys, don't walk with us if you are convinced that we are wrong. Don't go with us. It would be a hindrance for, you, for both Albert and me. Go to your church, go to your charismatic movement, go to your conference and have a wonderful time. We know it's strong. That is strong language. Yes, we do speak strong language, guys. And we know that the watchman, that the Gideon's gang will be small, insignificant. Okay. Luke 18, Luke 18, Luke 18. You never read from the New Testament. Ah, oh, sweetheart. We live, Yeshua lives in us, guys. 
but God decided to reveal his end time scenario in the prophets. That's why we read a lot in the prophets. I'm, I'm fine, by the way. Luke 18. You all know the story. But I just want to proclaim. Then Yeshua told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray. Listen carefully, guys. Always pray. So not like the pastors coming to me. Yes, our church, we pray every month for the peace of Jerusalem. Oh, this sweetheart. This sweetheart. And some say even, well, every week we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The stupidity, guys. Yes, now I'm straight. Because when you really pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that means that you're praying for war in the nations. If you want, if you want to know more about that, walk 10 days with us and I will explain that. Praying for the peace of Jerusalem is very powerful, guys. That is quite a stand in these days. But okay. They should always pray and not give up. And he said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice. Have a heck for that man. <laughs> so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones? Who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, and now this renowned quote, will, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Guys, we all know that scripture. And we all think, well, there will be some faith on this verse. You make a little mistake. This conclusion is connected to the first line. Yeshua told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. This is the quality of faith that, was, that Yeshua was talking about. He knows that people will go to church. He, will, he knows that they will have a wonderful worship service. He knows. But will I find this watchman faith? Every day, every night, Isaiah 62. I have appointed watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem. They will never be silent. This is the quality of faith that Yeshua was addressing. Do we find this faith on this planet Earth? Don't be angry with me. I say, no. Check your own church. Check your own church. No. Yes, we come together. We have a wonderful anointed conference. Oh! Oh, wonderful. What oh, is nice and uh, worship meeting. But God is calling an army of soldiers with a double edged sword in their hands. Every day, every night, we will wage war, guys. And that's what we do. And we love it. We love it. Why? Because, like yesterday, Worship is embedded, of a warfare is embedded in worship. You know, if we worship. Watchmen are worshippers. If you are not a worshipper, you, you will never survive this for 10 years. You know, you will, you will wear out, you will be worn out completely. Always fighting, fighting like many people in the church, you know, these intercessors. Oh, in the name of you. Guys, worship is a component a facet of warfare. It's not only the prelude, it's not only the introduction to warfare. Worship is a component of warfare. And that's what you read in Psalm 149, and we read that almost every day. 
and it leads to the double-edged sword, and we are not fighting flesh and blood, guys, Ephesians 6. And we put on the armor, the protection, and then we proclaim the written verdict. And I, I, maybe you say, yeah, you told me yesterday, guys, because you need to, it needs to, it needs to enter, it needs to be one, even, we you know, we know, we have in Holland, we have many watchmen groups. What I hear, the reports I hear, guys, it's almost a church again. It's all, we, we disconnect from that. We don't go with that, you know. Again, a kind of church and talk. <laughs> Guys, it is war! Uh, maybe in two years' time, we only walk the two of us. <laughs> really? Yes, yeah, the three of us. Uh, the four, the four, the five, the six, the, uh, well, the twelve of us. <laughs> but you know what I mean. This is, this is, guys, the gap is widening between the church, Christianity, and the word of God. And it's widening every year. We experience, it's widening. More and more people are hauled in the prison of humanism. Humanistic Christianity. Oh, those Syrian refugees. Oh, we can evangelize now. Completely cuckoo. They have an agenda. And you are a Christian. Guys, wake up. Wake up. I, I just want to read one more scripture from the New Testament. I like that. You know it, but you don't know it. <laughs> Ephesians 3.10. I can read it, of course. My intent, says God, my intent is that through the body of believers, the manifold wisdom of God would be made known to the principalities in the heavenly realms. That is the assignment for the body of believers. So not we are the watchmen, we are the watchmen, the, the entire body of believers. Can someone read it in, in English, in Dutch? Ja. Opdat nu door de gemeente aan de overheden en de machten in de hemelse gewesten de veelvuldige wijsheid van God bekendgemaakt zou worden, volgens het eeuwige voornemen dat Hij gemaakt heeft in Christus Jezus onze Heer. Ah, dat is goed zo. So that is the. That it, I, you know, hundreds of pastors came with me, hundreds, especially in the beginning. And then, you know, ich war salonfähig. You know, it was nice to walk with this guy. Now they don't come. But I, I mentioned this scripture every day almost. And many came because they don't bring their Bibles. You know that pastors don't bring their Bibles. It's the sheep that bring their Bibles. I say, where is that scripture? Where is that scripture? Ephesians. No, that is not in Ephesians. It is in Ephesians. So one more time. My intent, says God, is that through the body of believers, the manifold wisdom of God would be made known to the rulers and principalities in the heavenly realms. That is the assignment for the body of believers. And we fail, guys. We are having a wonderful time. Bible studies. Bible studies. Let me tell you this about Bible studies. You can follow Bible studies for 40 years and have a, a less stronger relationship with the Father after those 40 years. You can have a second of discernment, revelation, and your life can change completely in one yes. minute. I have seen people giving Bible studies, following Bible studies, and they, be they became dead. And I have met, I am one myself, I have met people that had a revelation of one minute that happened to me. And my life, it's an, a life-altering situation. This is what the body of Yeshua needs. Revelation. Understanding, discernment. Wow, why can't I do this every day? I, I don't understand. 
why don't I speak so nice to you? But you need to wake up. Okay, one more, the final scripture from the new covenant. So the people that have difficulty with that. Ephesians 5, you all know it, but now to hear it in Israel is different. 8, Ephesians 5, 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in Yahweh. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord, having nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, internet, you name it. But rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient Christians, because he is addressing the Christians, do in secret. Again, internet, all those rubbish. I am on Facebook. Are you on Facebook or on Facebook? There's a difference between faith and faith. Guys, all those crazy Christians. Yes, I am on faith. You, are you, are you okay? For it is light that makes everyone visible. This is why it is said, wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead. Actually, God told me, I will reveal a secret. Raise up dead in my body. I couldn't, I told my wife, what do I need to do? Raise the dead in my body. That is a, a direct call of God to me. And I was very reluctant. I was still camera, you know, traveling the world, making documentaries. Raise dead in my body. Raise the dead. So this is for me very special. Rise from the dead and Yeshua will shine on them, on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. Because these days are evil. Do we agree that these days are evil? Yes. yes. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. He doesn't say read your Bible every day, that's the Christian mantra, read your Bible. You can read the Bible for 60 years, guys, and not wake up. He says, try to understand what the will of the Father is. We call that discernment. The Holy Spirit of discernment. Unterscheidung. And that is what is lacking in your church and in your life. I don't even ask you. I tell you. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. Guys! Bart is very harsh these days. He's very direct. Guys, I love you. I love you. That is the reason why I am going over the edge every day. I have to. I cannot stand before the throne of the Father. Why didn't you tell them? Why didn't you cry out? Three weeks ago, there was a German pastor. You don't have to shout, sir. And then I opened my Bible and I showed him the, the, that God tells us to cry out, shout out. You know, we have been silent for centuries. Guys. It is time to cry out, Father. So let's go. Oh, so we have coffee, and this is enough actually. <laughs> this will do. Okay, guys, what we do, we praise God, of course, and by reading your Bible, you will praise God. That is enough. Take a stand. I hope you have a flyer. You have the flyer, and it's helpful. The, 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 and just proclaim. Make, make your
but because all of you have been on the walls, all of you. So whether it's a group, we don't take groups. There's never take groups to us. You know, they will, they will jump over the wall and run away. <laughs> so we don't take groups. You get a special dynamic in the group, and you see immediately, actually, before we go, we know. We know exactly what will be this, the walk of this morning. So never bring groups, guys. Never. It's an individual affair. Yeah. In the beginning, we took groups, but eventually we understood. The gap is too wide. There is too much that differs. It's Christian correct. So God is calling individuals. God is calling individuals when they come. So that is why we speak straight. It is solid food, fast food soul. Not milk life like in your church. Let's, let's again talk about the gifts of the Spirit. Ooh, for the 20 seconds line. It is milk life. And even then, let's talk about discipleship. Okay. Can the disciples stand up, please? And even the pastor will continue to sit down on this. Yes. You know, it's a different dimension, guys. It's a different season. You know, probably God spoke to you a long time ago, even in your childhood, that one day God will call you forward out of the shade and he will put you at the front line. Probably many of you, many of the watchmen, they have this experience. They knew that one day, when it's really getting hot, God will call them to the front line. And forget your reputation. I was a guy who I, I embraced my reputation, guys. I was a filmmaker, living in a nice house, you know, nice family, the good friends, you know, that all this life, Al Bart is such a social correct guy. And then God, how could you do that, Father? <laughs> he interfered. You know, he called me to do this, guys. You know, exactly the opposite. Losing your friends, you know, losing the correctness. Me, but even my friends today, they don't believe it. They don't accept it. Part. Still, after 10 years, still my friend, Part, are you completely God? Look what you have lost. Look what you have lost in Holland. You have your reputation, your friends. But I and my wife, we both we love. We love, we love, we love to be a pain in your neck. You need it. Trust us, you need it. I need it. All of our needs. You know, we are very sensitive. We never walk home. I never walk home with this kind of feeling of satisfaction. Never. I always am kind of struggling with the Father. Can it be a little bit more comfortable? <laughs> really, serious, serious. This is not a joke. You know, we are we are not giving you a comfortable time. We know that. We are not here to make friends like Paul. We are here to serve the Father in obedience. Right? That's it. It's part of, the, it's part of our call. Actually, I think it's called, it's actually, it should be in your church like that. You know, the, the body of believers is called to be like Paul. Follow my example. You know, we are called to be set apart, to be cursed at, to be mocked at. That people who write about you on the internet, Google, you know. My, I have one member in my, in my council, he's a dentist. And said, look what they are writing about, about me, you know, on the internet. I wasn't used to that, you know. There's a part when they stop calling you uh, her heretic, <laughs> I'm leaving your book. <laughs> that is, the, that is the, the balance, guys. When they would embrace us, then we, should, we are in danger. When you would embrace us, then we are getting very cautious. Uh -huh. so. I can paint a different picture, but actually I can't. Not anymore. This is it. Let's proclaim all together. So maybe you stand up and to explain to people you know it, but I will stress it.
when you read me, he, me, myself, and I in the Bible, it is always Israel. So read Israel. It's a good exercise. When you were a beginner, when you read, I cry to you, God, this is addressed to Israel, this book, not to you. It's not a Christian book. That's still a remnant of the replacement theology. Oh, you know, we are the army of God. You are not the army of God. Israel is. No, and I could continue. I will take this yellow book. It is disaster upon disaster upon disaster. When you read, you know, Israel is the army. Don't be mistaken. They are to pay the price. They are hurting. They are being killed. Ah, come in 10 days and we will really go deep. This is still surface stuff. When I really open the Bible, you know, the role that Israel is playing for us, the Gentiles, for the Christians. Hey, so read Israel, and less the addressee is mentioned. When it says the nations, of course you read nations. If not mentioned, it's Israel. Yes, that is the... Uh, the second tip and advice we give you, if you can read it in the present time, read it in the present time. If you can't, don't do it. Use your spiritual discernment and intelligence. So we read a lot in the present time. Uh, I would suggest that we read Psalm 114. Some people think that they know the scriptures. Guys, I will reveal a little secret. Even Paul and me, we don't know the scriptures. We are being surprised every day. So don't be too assured that you know the scriptures. That's why we give you this leaflet. We don't. Every time when I read Psalms, wow, wow, I didn't really read this. Right? Every day, guys. So we are very unhumble. We are, watchmen are strong but humble. We don't know the scriptures that we are supposed to. And we know the scriptures quite well. <laughs> but that is be humble, you know. Understand your position in this kind of earth. Psalm 140, I would advise you to stand up. When you read rescue me, read rescue Israel. Try it. It's a good exercise. Yes. Yes. Yes, so and make it make it present time. Eh? You can write it inside. Yes. So let's stand up and raise your voice. This is the Muslim water. And in the spiritual realm, Psalm 140. Psalm 140. Psalm 140. Just a second, just a second. Just a moment. That's Esther. It's the angel. You know, I visited the Temple Mount one day and I met this this scholar, a Muslim scholar, a Muslim later scholar. And I asked the person, may I ask you a question? I introduced myself. Sure. I said, could you answer me in a very honest way? What, what location is more significant for Islam? Mecca or Islam? What did this person answer? Yes. Yeah. Of course. Because the God of the church. And in the deep inside, you know, here they say Mecca, we need to go to Mecca. But the secret, the secret, they know that this is Yerushalayim. Because Allah, the God of destruction and terror, is fighting the God of the life of God. And Satan knows, Satan knows that eventually the Mashiach will not return in Mecca. He will return in Yerushalayim. So for watchmen, be aware, guys, of the spiritual significance of this location in this area. So this is actually the most Islamic place in the world in the sense of the spiritual dimension. And isn't it wonderful that we redeemed by the blood of Yeshua in the strength and power of Yeshua filled by the Holy Spirit of Yeshua. We 
are entitled to proclaim God's decree in heaven.